So now let's let's watch this. Let's watch this. All right. You got a problem here, guy? So let me ask you guys this. Is that the beginning of the movie? Like, do you think that that... I think that might be the... But usually, Scream opens up with a more small-scale, <laughs> confined type... In, you know, I think every single movie has had the same type of intro. Um, I don't. I, that looks to be like an opening shot where they're just, you know, they're all together. They're in the um, the convenience store, and then this guy just comes in dressed as Ghostface and starts fucking killing people. I would bet that this is the opening of the movie. Nope, they are already spooked. Bert says they're already spooked. All right, hold on. Let me let me go back then. See that you guys are gonna be a part of this. All right, hold on. Let me go back. Are they spooked? Let's see. Hold on. You got a problem here, guy? Okay, so they saw. I think they saw a crime happen down the street. And so then the uh, the ghost face comes in. So maybe the subway is actually the opening of the movie. And then they get off the subway. They see this crime happening. And uh, then, uh, you know, they run in the convenience store. And then all hell breaks loose. But I still think this is all the beginning of the movie. I, t I still think this is all the beginning of the movie. I I'm sure they're going to be... They might be, like, setting the table, so to speak. Um but every screen movie opens with an action sequence, you know, a really big. And the last one was one of the better opening sequences because Tara lived. So, um, and I'll go ahead and say this about Tara right now, Chris, because Chris brought this up. You might be right. And the, the reason I started thinking you might be right is because there was a massive riff between um, Sam and Tara in the in five, you know, like almost like. Tara it, does not like Sam at all. Now, I don't want to say that, but she's just, she's hurt, you know, because Sam left. And a lot can happen in that time when Sam left. So I am not um, leaving off the table that Tara, she might be the killer, one of the killers, you know. Also, guys, this could be one of those freaking movies where there is a massive cult and there are freaking, you know, it could be a dozen killers. Who knows? I have heard that this movie is going to be different. Okay? It's going to be... I'm not, I'm not going to say very different. Although they've given us enough to, for it to feel very different. But I do think this movie is going to be different. For sure. So, I love you too, Ami. Alright. Um, while we're here... the Guys, look at that fucking mask. Now, guys, I'm going to ask you this question. Why on earth would there be a decayed looking ghost face mask? Unless, you know, we saw in this trailer that a lot of people have ghost face masks. So maybe it's one that was, you know, already made like that, you know, just because there's different variants. Hell, there's a freaking chrome ghost face mask. So my hope is that this is a killer that has had that mask for the last 25 years. That is my hope. Not necessarily that it's Stu, but it's somebody that is connected to all of this all the way back, you know? I mean, we could be looking at the puppet master there. Um, one thing I like about this too is that it differentiates between, if there's two killers, one killer is going to have the decayed looking mask where the other killer is going to have a nice white clean mask. Uh, that would be my guess, you know? If they're doing two killers, of course. Um, so, and usually when there's two killers, there's one that's kind of the leader of the two. This would have to be the leader, I would think. Have to be the leader. I have never wanted to know who the killer was in a scream movie so bad. Just because of that mask. You know? Just because of that mask. Uh, take me uh, take me to your leader says, uh, what if it's someone from the chat? It could be. It could be. Uh, imagine if they included more of the funhouse mask and orange uh, ghost face mask, the bloody variant. Yeah. 
That I just want a good story. That's all. I want a good story. You know, that's the biggest thing. Tom Ungern says three killers. Let's go. All right, let's let's move forward. Let's move forward. Whoo, man, that's damn. Okay, um, about that scene right there. Uh, this seems like a guy that has military training or a guy that has done this quite a bit. This is a guy that is a seasoned killer. To be able to handle a situation like that, um, now I know this is a movie, and you know, some, if you're a bad writer, then you're going to write characters that are um, you know, in, insanely badass and not give them the backstory to back it up, okay? I would hope that that's not the case here. I, I would hope just seeing that scene, that's someone that knows what the hell they're doing, okay? Um, someone that has a lot of experience, all right? Wonder what kind of tattoo a ghost face cult would have. Ooh, what if they had like the Cult of Thorn? <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, on, the, uh, on the subway, is this whole movie set on Halloween? You know, because everybody's wearing like Halloween masks. Or or maybe they're all going to a con. Because, you know, you can go to a con any time of year and you're going to see people dress up like that. It would be cool if it's set on Halloween, though. Definitely cool. All right. Guys, by the way, up to this point, this is shit I've never seen in a Scream movie before. Is this blowing your fucking mind? Okay, next one. Next one. All right. Oh, let me, let me look at this. Let me look at this guy handle this idiot one more time. Hold on. That is so badass. Wow. I do like, um, I do like how they're, yeah, this is one of those trailers. It's so effective because they do give you a, a good portion of a certain sequence that they know is very effective. It's not just one of those trailers that's just quick shots of scenes throughout the movie. You know, this is kind of a combination of that. You do get uh, a variety of stuff, but you get nice moments like this where, okay, we know what kind of shit's going to go down in this um this store and this is a two minute 24 second trailer so i i like that they padded it a good bit with so they didn't give away too much you know what i mean i had this secret there's a darkness inside of me it followed me here and it's gonna keep coming for us <laughs> so why does it keep following now, I think she's talking about Billy, you know, because obviously Billy's the darkness. So I think um, Sam's pretty screwed up. I mean, guys, remember, too, in the last movie, she unloaded on um, Richie at the end of the movie. I mean, just completely went ape shit on the guy. That's going to have, um, that's going to screw somebody up, you know? So. You know, she's having all these visions of uh, Billy. And, and I would imagine that those visions come... Like, the more screwed up she is in the head, the more the more Billy's going to come. And so I think I think we're going to see a lot of Billy Loomis in this movie. Um, and, and I think that's what she's talking about. The, this, uh, this darkness that keeps following her. You know, it's almost like Dexter, you know, the dark passenger. So, but I absolutely love, like, this shot right here. There's a couple of really cool shots. Yeah, that one right there. That is a... She's looking at the mask. Um, now, is that the decayed mask? Me here. Oh, hold on. I just had a thought. I just had a thought. And guys, I know a lot of you are already ahead of me. Okay. Okay, guys, I, let me look at the chat. All right, hold on. Is that Billy Loomis's mask? Could that be Billy Loomis's mask? Did he leave her with that mask? Um, I haven't seen anybody mention this yet, but I, I'm sure somebody's had to mention this. That that could that that could be Billy Loomis's mask, you know. Um, I'm like, how did she? Maybe a cop gave it to her. Kind of like the beginning of Halloween 2018. Brooke says yes, it could be. That's possible. Hey, guys, 
I'm sure, have, have other people been saying this? There's no way I'm the first person that said this, right? There's no fucking way whatsoever. Um, I think that's a, there's a great possibility that is Billy Loomis's mask. And so why does, why does Sam have his mess? So whoever's a killer, maybe they took it away from her. You know, maybe they stole it from her. Chris says, I think it is, uh, the mango's face must have Stu's mask. Yeah. Oh, the, damn. This guys, everybody keeps saying there's no Stu. There's Stu's coming back. They're setting shit up guys. They're setting shit up. Wow. All right. I mean, that's, that could be Billy Loomis's mask guys. Damn, it damn. followed me here and it's going to keep coming for us. <laughs> we share a certain history. Okay, so that's all they're showing us of Kirby. Hold on. Yeah, so... Uh, we know... What do we know? We know that Kirby is... Uh, isn't she like an FBI agent? She's a cop of some sort, something like that. So she probably lives in New York, uh, I'm thinking. Which, by the way, I that apartment that Gail's in... I mean, does Gail now live in New York? Maybe maybe Gail would move to New York because Dewey passed away and she wants to put Woodsboro behind her, you know, who wouldn't want to. So, um, it, it's Mikey Weiss. What is up, brother? Dude, I was just thinking about you the other day, man. I hope you're doing well, brother. She looks rough in that shot. So that was likely the end of the movie. She might have gotten that mess. That's a good point, Mikey. That is actually a really good point. That could be near the end of the movie. I'm hoping it's not, though. I'm hoping it's not. Yeah, Hayden looks amazing, Beth. She has really aged like a fine wine. She looks great. And I'm glad that she's, um, you know, I know she went through some shit over the last few years. And uh, I'm glad the Scream family loves her and she's back on her feet, you know. And, uh, I, you know, everybody, I, I just watched, uh, I did a Scream run. I didn't watch all the movies, but I watched four last week and I watched five a couple days ago. Had a freaking ball. And Kirby is so good in Scream 4. So fun, so entertaining. It's always fun when you see a character that's, you know, very similar to who we are, you know, as horror fans. When she's rattling off all those remakes at the end. Great stuff, great stuff. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with her. I've heard some people state that she might be the opening kill. No way. That, there's no way that's the beginning of the movie. There's no way. She's, so you can kind of put two and two together on a lot of this stuff. You know, Gory Tiger, how you doing? All right. So um, let, let's move forward. Let's move forward. All right. We share a certain history. Oh, my God, guys. So, all right, let's let's talk about this real quick. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? There is a cultish um ghost face worshiping society because let, let's think about it this way what if this was real life okay it, there was this ghost face killer it's always a different group of killers for the last 25 years automatically that already sounds like a cult it, it all it automatically sounds like what is connecting all of those killers together you know um billy and Stu in the first movie um De debbie salt and Mickey in the second movie, uh, Roman in the third movie, um, Jill, Charlie in the fourth movie, and then Richie and Amber. I think there is something connecting every single one of them. And so maybe somewhere along the line, somebody created this underground cult in New York, you know, and it's like a fight club, except it's a ghost face club. And uh, this thing, it just gets bigger than we've ever seen it before. Let's take this to the next level. You know, let's go. Uh, it's kind of like the hive in Resident Evil. Let's go deeper down, down the uh, the rabbit hole. You know, Eric. Thank you. He says, "Remember what I said. Ki uh, killer is making her own rules." So he thinks that there's a female killer. Could be a female killer in there. Uh, well, I mean, I think in every movie they they kind of make their own rules, though, don't they? But we'll get there. But they do say like, "There's this is different." We'll, we'll get to that scene though. This isn't like any other ghost face. So, yeah, this is it. Let me back up. Hold on, hold on. Let me listen. Let me listen. Hold on. We share a certain history. 
this isn't like any other ghost face. Okay, I never caught this until now, but that's actually Kirby that says that. This isn't like any other ghost face. So she's been... Maybe Kirby knows about this secret underground society. You know? Why is it not like any other ghost face? Any, any suggestions from you guys? Why is this not like any other ghost face? Let me think about that for a sec. Hold on. Let me think about that. Well, if you have a cult of, you know, ghost face worshipers... Um, they're all going to have their own unique personalities. They all are going to kill maybe in different ways, but I think it goes deeper than that. What is, what is it that makes this ghost face so unique? You know, what is this place? A shrine. So how did Gail find this? Well, Gail, she's a freaking reporter. Of course, that's an easy answer. She, she probably, so guys, I, I will, I wonder if this takes place after Gale is attacked, you know, I guess my money's on that. It's not, I think they, somebody found out that Gale was snooping and then they, they said, okay, we got to kill her, you know? So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got to lure him in. We execute him. So this is final act stuff. We, we have to lure him in. We got to execute him. But the 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 uh, twist is you can't trust, you know, anybody. One of them could be the killer, and they all know this. So it's interesting that they're all banding together. I've always it's funny enough. I've always compared Scream to Scooby Doo. It really is Scooby Doo, like a modern version of it. I guess done right, you know, because there's always a big twist at the end, and you know, they pull the they pull the mask off and. You know, it's usually the the doctor or somebody like that, or the the the, the janitor, or the lawyer, or whatever. But so uh, yeah, really curious to see uh, how that's going to play out if they're all banding together. Uh, they would have to like stick together to trust each other, right? Hello. Let's play a game. You know, you're like the tenth guy to try this, right? It never works out for the dipshit in the mask. So who, guys, who was the guy that just got attacked? You know, could that be Chad? I don't think it's Chad, but it could, could it be Chad? Like, yeah, you don't really see Chad too much in this trailer either. And also, what if Chad's the killer? You know, maybe that's why they're not showing Chad too much. It's Stu Dad. <laughs> uh, will this cross over with Cocaine Bear? Um, it could. Uh, I was I was reading that like will this cross over with Cobra like what if Cobra shows up um, that would be awesome and Cobra's kind of a slasher so yeah I would love it maybe but there's never been one like me Gail <laughs> okay guys um, he he literally put like wiped the knife off, knife off like the first movie and I I know that they've done this in other movies before, but that's like a tie to the first movie, if you ask me. You know, him doing that, because that was the way that Stu and Billy did it. So, am I reading too much into that, guys? Or do they do that in like every single movie? It's not something that, maybe they do, maybe they do, but I don't, I don't always notice it, you know? Both Chad and Liana wasn't shown much. That's true. That's very true, Adam's House. Thank you very much. It's Nev Campbell. <laughs> what if it is Nev Campbell? Uh, guys, uh, let me just say this right now. Oh, Beth says, Cobra needs to be a slasher vigilante franchise. Let's make that happen. I would love that. I would love that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? What if, like, a while back I stated that what if Gail Weathers completely comes in this movie and just slays like completely kicks ass saves the day like what if this is the what if this is gail weathers movie you know i would love that and um i think some more of that dark side is going to come out in sam it, we'll, we'll get there because that's we're going to see that in, in a minute here hold on i'm something different that's why i'm gonna shoot you in the head yeah, she definitely said fucking head. And I yeah, I, I heard there's like a red band trailer. But yeah. 
I'm something different. What do you guys think that means? What do you guys think that means? Oh, yeah. All right. Hold on. Hold on. So you could like, let's study this shot right here. Okay. This is, she has been through hell. Hold on. Hold on. I, I need a little bit more, but, but she's pointing the gun at another direction and there is, there's a ghost. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's that, those like meat curtains <laughs> that did not sound right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in a produce they have curtains that are made of plastic and and they'll they will protect the meat okay jesus get your minds out of the gut okay <laughs> so is ghostface hiding behind those curtains right <laughs> um and it almost looks like he's holding he's like talking into the voice thing like you could really read a lot what do you guys think about this shot okay <laughs> Uh, Tara looks so great. Yes, she does. She re she really does. She wears blood really nicely, doesn't she? Um, uh, Sebastian, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. A lot more people jumping in. Nice, nice, nice to see you guys. Okay. Uh, I think Ghostface is going to drop the ladder down so uh, they can fall. We'll see. Not enough meat curtains. <laughs> I own that. I did that. Okay, I did that. That was my bad. <laughs> I swear to God, guys, that was an accident. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's go a little further. You want me. So let's finish this. Okay. So I, for a second, I was thinking, what if what if Sam is the killer? You know? Like, what if all that blood and stuff is because she just revealed herself? But, hold on. God, this is driving me crazy. Hold on. Hold on. Let me think about it. It's like a puzzle, almost. Jesus. <sighs> Oh my God, guys, I just had another thought. Another thought. Okay. What if you had a ghost face against a ghost face? You know? I mean, because we've seen ghost to ghost face at all. Like, even in the first movie, he stabs him a little bit too hard. You know, there's, there's definitely some, like, uh, tension there, some animosity. What if she is the killer and she's confronting the other killer? You know? I, I mean, I know I'm, that's a long shot, but uh, I think anything's possible. At this point, guys. All right. I think she's talking to herself in the mirror. The head nod is reserved to hers. Uh, Malibu dollface. Let's see. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Get, let me go back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay. Okay. Hold on. So. Yeah, you got Sam and Tara back to back. So they're, I bet they're both facing both ghost faces. So I think there's at least two killers in this movie, okay? Because Tara is looking, she's not even bothered by the other direction that's facing Sam. She, so again, she's facing another ghost face, which if they wanted to reveal that Tara is the killer, this would be the time to do it because Tara seems like she's good. And then what if she turns around to Sam and stabs her in the back, like, so to speak, you know? Or maybe she really stabs her in the back. I don't know. See, that's why this is a good trailer, guys, because we, we, we still have no idea. We have no idea. You want me. So let's finish this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you see? And Chris brought this up earlier, too. So let's finish this. Yo, my God. Oh, my God. Ho oh. Guys, I need your thoughts on this. What What's going on? Are there shenanigans going on here? Nicholas, what's up, man? Are there shenanigans going on? The way Tara is looking at her. Did, did, did I just call it? She was back to back with her. She turns around. She, you know, she, she dupes her, you know, stabs her in the back. And then they have a big fight. And then, oh my God, sister versus sister. Anakin versus Obi-Wan. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, this, 
That's the moment Tara turns on Sam for the reveal. Three killers, bam, yep. God, if I had to put Vegas money on it, you might be right, Chris. You might be right. Holy shit. See, that's why, you know, somebody just posted this on Twitter the other day too about somebody's going to watch the trailer and then they're going to get mad because they're going to feel like they just got, they got spoiled, you know? But hey, we, you know, it doesn't bother me because we don't know. We still don't know, but we can speculate. But man, that is very, very telling. Or here's another, here's another option. Here's another option. What if Sam is not holding Tara's arm there? What if that's actually the killer holding Tara's arm? That's a possibility. You know, what if the killer's literally holding her up? Oh God, I can't wait for this movie. Can it be March already? Jesus. Uh, Sam uh, was depicted as psychotic Billy Visions in previous movies, so it's entirely possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Look at the heavy eye makeup as if hiding her identity under a ghost face mask with an evil smile. What the fuck? Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> wow. Wow, well, we were. <laughs> Jesus. And she is short, Richie. Okay, let's move forward. Hold on. Yeah, she definitely has uh, some makeup. There's some shenanigans going on there. Or maybe they want us to think that, you know? They know that we're studying these trailers. Wow. I look at it this way, though. Like, if it is revealed that she's a killer, I won't even be upset, you know? Um, because I'm still just excited. I'm excited because I'm really in, invested in Sam and Tara now. And it's like uh, Darth Vader, you know? You knew Anakin was going to become Darth Vader, but... What made the movie so good, in my opinion, was that they were best friends, him and um, Obi-Wan, you know? So even though we knew how it was going to end, uh, it's still great. I love episode three, by the way, guys. I do. Oh, my God, there's Samara Weaving. Holy shit. I didn't even notice that. Yep, there she is. There's Samara Weaving. There's your opening kill. There's your opening kill, guys. I just called it. Samar, we am I wrong, guys? Samar weaving, opening kill. John Doe, you don't really think this looks bad, guy. John Doe, I swear to God, you don't think this looks bad, okay? And if you like, why would you think this looks bad? If this was the first movie, if this wasn't a franchise, if this trailer just popped up and we were like, oh, this is brand new movie called Scream, and this, you would say that looks fucking amazing. I have to go see that. I'm not buying it, John Doe. Maybe he thinks that though. I still love you though. I love you, but I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling bullshit, John Doe. All right? John, John Doe, look at me. Tell me you really think that's a bad trailer. All right? Hold on. I'm the captain now. Okay, John Doe? You don't think that's a bad trailer. You think that's a good trailer. All right? Direct to Peacock. Hey, did you see Sick? That's direct to Peacock, and Sick was awesome. All right? So that that's not an excuse. They have tons of good movies that goes directly to, to streaming. All right? The Babysitter with Samara Weaving. That's awesome. You like that? I guarantee you like that movie, John Doe. Okay. Uh, so brightly lit like a romance. Guys, is that bright? I don't mean to pick on John Doe, but is that brightly lit? Like, I've seen brighter, okay? I've definitely seen brighter. Um, I did review Skinnamarink. Lindsay! Uh, it looks like all the other 90s teen horror that tried to capitalize on the Scream fame. All the elements, but none of what made Scream spectacular. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Lindsay. I'm, I got a feeling this is going to be good. I got a feeling this is going to be really good. Um, and, hey, guys, I've told you in the past how I feel about Scream. I'm not I'm not a diehard, okay? I'm not a diehard, but uh, if it's a good movie, if it's a good trailer, then I'm going to get excited, all right? The reason I'm excited about this is because it looks like it's taken the franchise in a different direction. And uh, I think Stu's coming back. And maybe that's why I'm so excited. I do think Stu's coming back. All right? All right. Hold on. Let's keep going. All right? Guys? Are they going to a convention? Or are, is it this take place on Halloween? Um, 
It would be cool if this takes place on Halloween, if I'm being honest. Yeah. That doesn't even matter. But I do like all the like Easter eggs in there. Like you see Pinhead. I saw Freddy. Yeah, there's Freddy. Uh, yeah, there's Chad. Why, are, guys? Why are they not showing Chad that much? Is there is there some uh, some fishy shit going on there? Because uh, that's kind of that's kind of fishy to me. You know, why are they not showing Chad? Chad is in on the. By the way, I, what if what if Chad is the one holding Tara's hand? You know, and Chad's good, and Tara is Ghostface, right? I don't know. I don't know. All right, all right. Let's keep going. My next question for you guys, uh, and I've been thinking about this. All right. Is Mindy going to be killed in this movie? I think she's not going to be killed in this movie. And the reason I say that is because they killed Randy in the second movie. And I think Mindy, you know, she's related to Randy. And I think Mindy is a way of maybe apologizing. And so I don't think, I don't think they're going to kill Mindy. I think Mindy's going to live. And I know she's not going to get killed here because we do see that scene of her crawling across from one building to another building, right? So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Mindy's here to stay. She's gonna, she's at least gonna live until the next movie. All right, I believe they confirmed a while ago it's Halloween. Okay, well that's cool. I like that it's set on Halloween, and you know that just makes it fun to watch it in October. You know, yeah, Chad's a goner. Yeah, I think they're gonna kill Chad. I don't think they're gonna kill Mindy. You know, which sucks because I, I kind of like I kind of like Chad now. I really like after I watched it again, I kind of and plus Chad, I watched the interviews with the guy and uh, he's Cuba Gooding Jr.'s son. And he's just very charismatic. You know, he's like he seems like the coolest guy. So I, it would suck if the, like I would almost rather them kill Mindy than Chad, if I'm being honest. All right. I think Mindy get, get, uh, gets got. I think Chad's surviving Adam. OK. All right. Lindsay's looking forward to this movie. I guarantee you she is. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, we finished it. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Not a single one of them is charismatic as Jamie. Well, I mean, hey, we're talking about fucking Jamie Kennedy here, okay? That's like the, that's like the, uh, the Dalai Lama of Scream, you know? It's unfair to even compare them to, to Randy, you know? And also, is it almost kind of poetic that they, like, thinking back now, I don't think, of course I didn't want them to kill Randy, but thinking back now, I think because they killed Randy in Scream 2, maybe it made, like, people love him just that much more. Don't get me wrong. Love Randy. He was one of the brightest spots in the first movie. Uh, If he would have kept living, like, if Randy was alive today, would he still be as strong a character you know remains to be seen but i do think that people hold randy so high now because he died in the second movie again love the guy okay not taking anything away from the character he's one of the greatest horror characters ever created you know but i think it almost uh almost made him a martyr by killing him in the second movie okay by the way, Kids vs. Aliens, V.O. Dodd, uh, Vod <laughs> Demar, fleshed out from Fragment from VHS 2. Okay. What's up, Michael? How are you doing? Um, all right. So, do I, and I, the reason I did this is so I could talk about Velma. <laughs> You're at the end of the video. What's up guys? Thank you for watching this uh, DD Live clip. What that is, is after I do a live stream, I usually cover news items or just topical type stuff or sometimes even reviews, top tens, whatever. And I clip them out for your convenience so you can get bite-sized episodes from the live stream. So now that you're at the end, you can uh, you can look over here or here somewhere and you can click on the playlist that I have for the DD Live clips and then you can watch other episodes. There's probably at least like 50 of them by now, maybe 100, who knows. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Love you.